So we have the luxury of working in our offices with uh, universities all over the world um, in 110 countries and over 6,000 uh, universities uh, are using our graphical system design uh, platform. Uh, there's one university that we'd like to talk about this morning. It turns out that this university is the number one ranked engineering school on the planet. They happen to be located in the Northeast, in Cambridge, on the Charles River. It's MIT. So, um, <laughs> wait till you see what they have to show. Uh, so this morning, uh, we announced a new partnership with the Mechanical Engineering Department. We've been working with them uh, closely for many years, uh, but we, over a five-year period, they're going to be integrating LabVIEW in a total of 14 courses throughout the mechanical engineering curriculum. You can see the list of those courses. It's in many different areas and uh, many different technologies. So this morning, we'd like to talk about one of those courses uh, that's already been implemented with LabVIEW and Compact Rio. And here to talk about the introduction to robotics is Professor Harry Asada. Good morning, Good morning Ray. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm Harry Asada from MIT. Um, I'm in charge of 212 Introduction to Robotics. Uh, for years, I've been teaching robotics uh, in the Department of Mechanical Engineering and have numerous opportunities to um, teach some of the term, uh, project oriented subjects using various gadgets and uh, uh, platforms. Now, the true value in the subject comes when you give the students real world challenges that the students have never seen in the back of the textbook. And I'm pleased to share some of my experience in teaching robotics in the term project. Well, every year, we uh, try to come up with the really exciting topics for term project, and the students really love that. But there are a few caveats and the difficulties that you have to manage. First of all, the course 212, the students are made up mostly from mechanical engineering, having a very limited experience in programming. Um, so it turns out that the class is divided into two groups. One group is very proficient in the programming and take the lead and dominate the project. And the other group of students were left behind, unable to participate in any important discussions. But the problem has been solved, I would say, that at least uh, alleviated by introducing the really nice uh, programming environment, user-friendly and uh, intuitive. And uh, thereby, the students uh, having a very limited uh, programming experience uh, can be engaged and uh, contributed to the positivity to the project. Second, the robotics is really, really um, also disciplinary. And the students have to master a bunch of uh, you know, tools and the method in a shorter time. In our case, we covered control algorithms, machine vision, system simulation, CAD design, the fabrication, verification, and testing, to name just a few. So fitting all these elements into a single semester subject is a challenge. But again, in my experience is that if you provide the right integrative, um, cohesive tools, for doing this. Students did the marvelous jobs, and in fact, some, some groups learned all the tools very quickly, and integrate all the elements, and they did think something at the system level to solve the whole problem. Finally, um, although term projects are very popular, but I, I do have to teach some of the fundamentals that must be covered in class. And it turns out that the um, term project could only take six to seven weeks. And we must uh, expedite and you know, streamline everything. So if students have to use the hardware and soft software from different vendors, they have to deal with the number one, the uh, interface, and they have to spend a lot of time in just you know, getting started all the stuff. So again, providing the right tools that actually integrative and cohesive and uh, intuitive is a very crucial requirement for successful um, project and uh, robotics um, and education. Now, today I'd like to uh, showcase one of the recent projects. We brought this system from MIT, 
And this is the uh, machines uh, we used for the last year's uh, term project. And uh, actually, um, uh, this is to fix the oil leaks program. We heard of this program a lot the last year. And uh, actually, uh, the kind of a scenario I set up is the following. So suppose this is the ocean, and the robot has to find the location of the damaged oil leak, and uh, position it, and then drop the uh, you know, equipment to fix it, basically to plug it. You can see that this part, this is the damaged um, rising head um, pipe. You can see there oh, um, this particular part, if you can uh, zoom in. Um, so so the, this is actually damaged and having an older shape. Uh, so the project, uh, the challenges are twofold. One is that the student team must be able to autonomously bring the tools to find that the location and, the, and the drop the device to uh, plug the uh, well. But remember that the, this is a damaged uh, um, um, the, um, in a pipe, so it has an odd shape and a structure. So it's a bit tricky to go inside of that and plug it properly. So uh, we evaluate the team performance in two ways. One is that how quickly they can find the location of this by having the right algorithms using this vision system so over here. The second, we evaluate how tightly they can actually plug this uh, uh, leaking uh, the riser. And in fact, we brought in the kind of uh, you know, um, uh, vapor uh, smoke generator over here, and we use that for the purpose of evaluating the, uh, the tight fitting. Unfortunately, we are unable to run it today, you know, um, but uh, uh, we did use that for evaluating how tightly the uh, seat has been made. The, some of the groups uh, did a bothersome job. Even though we increase the pressure, there's no smoke, no leak observed, meaning that in a perfect uh, fitting. Now at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, my uh, student teams. Um, come over here. Uh, Meyer, uh, Trevor, Carmen, EJ, and Eric. They are on the winning teams that won our class competitions. So they came up with the brilliant ideas from a point of view that they have the right algorithms to quickly search it and make the beautiful hardware to plug the, this one perfectly. So Trevor, you can tell us the, what's the you know, nice stuff you have done. Yeah, so the first thing we had to do was come up with an autonomous algorithm to find the oil riser pipe on the seafloor full of sea life. Um, and so, most teams actually just use a simple lawnmower method. So they'd systematically scan each row of the test area for the riser. Um, but to save time, our robot moves in a spiral pattern, starting in the center and slowly working its way outward. <clears throat> As it's moving, it'll periodically pause to let the robot stabilize and then take an image using a USB camera mounted on the XY stage. At this point, it can take a look at the image with a circle detection algorithm uh, and see if, it, see if the riser is in the image. If it is, then the robot can incrementally move closer to the riser using the vision system until the camera is situated directly above the pipe. At this point, it's, it's a simple mo uh, forward movement just to get the plug right over the riser instead of the camera. As the Z-stage descends, the robot lowers the plug into the pipe. Now, because the pipe is damaged and has a really regular shape, we had to come up with a novel way to navigate the plug past any obstacles without making it mechanically complex. To accomplish this, we mounted the plug on a flexible universal joint on the end of a shaft. We can then use the precise motions of the gantry system to swing the plug perfectly into place. By moving the gantry in a six waypoint jiggle pattern, which you will see here, we can push the plug passively past any obstacles and navigate it into the undamaged bottom portion of the riser. And as you can imagine, it took a little while to get this jiggle motion perfected so that it consistently put the plug in the bottom of the riser every time. Um, and this is where LabVIEW really came in handy because we could change parameters, um, we could redeploy and test in just a few seconds. Um, so instead of waiting for code to compile, we could uh, spend our time on algorithm engineering. Now once the plug is in the bottom of the riser, a locking tube descends and teeth on the end of this tube engage with holes on the top surface of the plug. 
At this point, the plug shaft spins. This turns a screw and draws the top and bottom plates of the plug together, compressing a ring of surgical tubing between them. This causes the tubing to bulge out against the walls of the pipe and form a tight pressure resistant seal. Once the plug is sufficiently tight, the locking tube retracts, the shaft spins in the opposite direction, and the plug is disconnected from the robot. The robot can then return to the home position, leaving the plug sealed tightly in place. And one additional benefit of our design that we didn't mention earlier is that what's left behind is cheap and easy to reproduce. So if this were a realistic scenario, we wouldn't be leaving expensive technology on the seabed. Instead, it would just be a simple plug with no electronic components. The risk with the project like this is that the students often get stuck with the old technical details. They have to spend hours and hours just you know, troubleshooting and fixing something. Now we found that the um, uh, C-Rio, uh, compact Rio, provide the perfect uh, solution to, uh, to meet our needs. Um, as I said, it is to uh, provide the comprehensive you know, solutions and very user-friendly and intuitive. And, uh, and most importantly, this device is to engage a whole group. So that's the story about the MIT's uh, 212. Back to you, Ray. Wow. So how about a big round of applause for that? Huh? Dr. Asada, thank you so much. Yeah. Sure would have been nice if BP could have had this technology last <laughs> summer, huh? Right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> wow, that is amazing. Absolutely amazing. You know, it was just uh, last year, right, when the Deepwater Horizon spill happened and uh, the millions of gallons of oil were pumping into the Gulf and we were all helpless, uh, hoping that they would eventually solve it. Uh, but that's a great example, though, where you can take a very relevant problem it's engaging for the students. They understand why it's important to figure it out. And there you have a really, really interesting uh, application.